What's up, guys? Welcome back to another episode of Adventures in Drunk Fish Keeping. That is refreshing. Tonight's brew of choice is Dragon's Milk. Uh, it's made by New Holland. Um, wasn't the biggest fan of this when it first came out. Took a little while, but starting to start really dig it. Um, you know, it's just a bourbon barrel aged stout. It's malty. It's got a little bit of hoppiness to it. Um, definitely some chocolatey notes. So it's not a bad one. You know me, I'm always for the bourbon stouts. Um, so I'm getting ready to show you guys the 120. Um, I haven't cleaned the glass. Um, it's kind of dirty, so just, you know, deal with it. Um, first things first, you'll notice here the big arch rock that was full of GSP. I have made a reefer's trade for a new, brand new arch rock and uh, a surprise that's here on this bucket. Um, and down here, you'll see two Jason Fox uh, Jack Leonard Leptos, a Fire and Ice, Dragon, Super, Reverse Superman. There's like four different names for this particular style of Monty. Um, your main skeletal structure is a nice orangey red with blue polyp. So it's a really pretty one. Um, that's my Garth Acro that has fallen down right there. I'm going to have to put him back up. And then a... Uh, Trying to debate if it's in the A-Can or the Blasto Musa family. Want to lean more towards an A-Can. It may be a Blasto Musa. Not 100% sure. Don't really care. It's pretty. When I go to propagate it, I'm just going to sell it as pretty coral. Anyway, um, so the GSP I have is a branching style GSP. It doesn't just mat out. It actually kind of stacks up almost in a shelf-like structure. Um, and as you can see, the mother colony is quite large. So it will retake over said arch rock in a couple months and that arch rock will be covered with GSP again. And I'll probably sell it and or trade it out um, just because no one seems to have a branching shelving type GSP. It's all the carpet stuff. So what's in the bucket? What's in the bucket, man? What's in the bucket? If any of you guys have ever seen the movie Seven, that would be kind of funny, but anyway. So, here's what's in the bucket. A big old fat powder blue. Now, anybody who's watched my channel, um, you know, you guys remember I had a really good sized, um, healthy, fat powder blue. Um, before the hurricane we had down here in Wilmington, due to not having power for seven days, I was kind of at a loss to keep my fish alive because I didn't have a generator. And I did evacuate, so I wasn't able to be around. And I did lose some fish in that one, of which was my powder blue, uh, my mimic chocolate, um, my yellow black spot wrasse, one of my big antheus. I lost some fish. It was not a not a good time. Um, I wasn't very thrilled with losing my fish, but you know I didn't have much of a choice because you know we were going to get a Category Four hurricane, so kind of had to you know roll out, but made strides in the past year because we're coming up almost on a year anniversary of said hurricane and I've made strides in the tank not only in coral growth but also in fish growth kind of had to start over on the fish side the coral managed to survive but fish really you know I had to work hard to get these guys back where I wanted them at but so the reason I'm making the video today um, is to show you guys how to acclimate a larger fish that does have a reputation of being a little bit on the uh, kind of picky side, and that is a powder blue. Um, powder blues, in my opinion, are not hard tangs to keep. Um, they're aggressive. Um, I would definitely recommend if you're going to get a powder blue, make sure it is the last tang you add to the tank. It is going here with a Desjardini and a Tamini. Uh, Tamini. Um, and the Tamini and the Desjardini are both, I don't know, probably about an inch shorter than this powder blue, so I hope there's not a lot of aggression. Um, um, I don't think there'll be a lot of aggression and I'm gonna show you guys my adventures in fish keeping buddy this is our this is our bargain puppy we found him bargain puppy say hey then bargain puppy he likes hanging out with me while I do the fish tanks so um, one of the things most times you go to LFS you get a fish you get it in a bag you dunk the bag in the water tape it to the side of the tank however you want to do it slowly add water in when they're bigger a five gallon bucket is like really awesome to have. And all you gotta do is just get some of your tank water 
and just about every 10 or 15 minutes I add you know, four or five ounces of tank water. Um, this guy has been in here now going on about an hour. Um, I've been kind of adding water in now for about the past 30 to 45 minutes so we're gonna be putting him in here in just a minute. <clears throat> I would usually recommend on you're harder to you know you're harder to keep and that's like I said throwing it out there because all fish are different but powder blues your angels some of those guys <clears throat> definitely want to acclimate them uh, for upwards of an hour to two hours there's a drip acclimation method which is just taking a hose and just letting it slowly drip into the tank there's this way which is you know putting a few ounces of a, your established tank water into the water from the vendor you picked it up from whether it be a big pet store or you know LFS um, you do not want to take said water and put back into your tank. Um, that is because even the nicest LFS, the water's not the same. You have to deal with potential parasites, hitchhikers, whether there is, you know, they've got a different salinity rate, they've, they've got different magnesium, calcium, alkalinity, pH, all those factors play in. So normally you acclimate the fish with your water so they don't get shocked. The temperature, at the same time, they're getting current tank water coming out to keep the temperature right. The only downside if you're acclimating for long periods of time is flow inside said bucket, box, whatever you decide to acclimate them in. It's beneficial to potentially have a smaller power head just to generate some flow. Like I said, he's only been in here for about an hour 20 at this point, so you know he's still got some oxygen left over in there as i'm adding water in there i'm kind of stirring a little bit but we're not getting a, a true oxygen exchange so you don't want to leave them in a bucket for two or three hours without some form of movement whether it be a bubble or a pump or something like that i have a bubbler um i'm just i'm gonna put him in here in just a minute so i don't really see the need for a bubbler um and with someone who's had multiple tanks this is kind of the same setup i've always done with success for the tanks. Now, like I said, you don't want to use the water. Um, as you can see, show you this guy again. Big old fat boy. So, you don't want to use the water from your LFS. Uh, like I said, just two different you know compositions of water. It's never going to be the same water. But what you don't want to do is try to, to dump him in like that. Not exactly. Uh, not exactly the way the fish wants to go in the tank, I can guarantee that. So you want a net appropriate to size of said fish. This net is appropriate to size of said fish. Now I'm going to show you guys this. Now what we're going to do is we're going to ease in here. Now he's going to freak and rightly so because you know he's kind of, he's gotten used to his bucket and you kind of want to let him, yeah, there we go. That went off really. Okay. All right, so we're going to ease him in. All right, so <laughs> sometimes it can be a little bit splashy. And we're going to ease him in. All right, so he's in. And he's checking everybody out. He's up in the tank, kind of getting a feel for everybody. Now, here is a good time to feed again. Um, like I said, one of the things I like to do beforehand is feed the tank before a fish goes in. Um, like I said, I just found that that helps out with aggression. Now, since you don't know how this fish has been fed and or treated beforehand, it's best to feed a multitude of food off the bat, pellet flake, um, you know, maybe some, some meaty some seaweed, all those different things to kind of see what the new addition is going to go after. You kind of know what you've got in there now. And right now is probably the trickiest uh, slash the most crucial point of introducing a fish into a system is, you know, the initial few minutes when he goes in there because right now he's scoping out his area. He's seeing what he's got, where he's got to go, things like that. Um, you know, this is, this is a very crucial part of this endeavor. Um, now is when you want to make sure that you present lots of food. And I'm going to probably overfeed the crap out of this tank. So all you people that are purists that feed them with eyedroppers, you can excuse me, but you know, I kind of want to make sure that 
we don't have problems. So that was just a big old wad of spirulina, which, you know, I'm probably gonna end up doing a bit of a water change here in a minute. Um, so he's not eating, but he's colored up good. So we'll see how he goes. Hopefully, good. Um, I'll probably give you guys an update video in a night or two. I need to do one on the fluval, but I've just been lazy. Like I said, I've been busy. So that was just kind of a quick video to show you guys what we do when we put in a bigger, more picky fish to a system. Um, we'll just keep washing, see how it does. I'll shoot you guys an update video tomorrow, um, you know, after he's settled in. But as always, if you like the video, like, subscribe to the channel, keep bringing you guys awesome adventures in drunk fish keeping.